The AI 360 camera is new to the Ubiquiti store and I have one right here in front of me. Let's jump straight in and talk about the specs of the PTZ camera. This camera captures video at 1920 by 1920 at 30 frames per second. It is a fisheye lens and it has a 5 megapixel CMOS sensor, which is the same as the G4 Bullet. It also is IPX4 rated and IK08 rated tamper resistant, just like the G4 Dome. It's powered by PoE and it has two-way audio as well. Now Ubiquiti claim to have a sophisticated AI inbuilt which makes this ideal for shopping centres, parking lots, airports, train stations. Now unfortunately I can't mount this camera in those areas to put it to the test, so we're just going to have to test it in my studio with one person in it. One thing that does interest me is to see how this gets on both indoors and outdoors. I know with the G4 Bullet when I've done some testing in the past if I stand up to 25 meters away from it you can't see anything at night time. So I'm going to test this inside the studio and outside both day and night. Let's see how we get on with it. A big thank you to all my subscribers who have subscribed already to my channel but if you haven't already be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and comment down below as well what you think of this camera. And if you want to support the channel in other ways it's in the description below. Anyway let's take a look at what comes inside the box and then we can get this set up. Let's open the box right here and let's see what's inside. Straight away you're greeted with the 360 camera which you can see has got the fisheye lens on top. If we have a quick look on here you've got your ethernet cable which runs around here and a weatherproofing cap so if you wanted to uh, mount this outdoor, make sure your ethernet cable is weather tight, you can use this as well. So let's pop this to one side. You have a quick start guide, so as we've come to see in most Unify packaging, that comes inside here with a QR code. We have a mounting guide, so if you're mounting it against a wall, you can use this to pop your screws in and you know exactly where it's going to get mounted. We have the additional lens. now. Now the one on here that I mentioned before isn't rated, this is the one that is vandal resistant. It comes with a nice cover to keep it protected, so on this side that just pops on there. And on this side you have a seal on that you can just peel off. This lens is removable. Just going back to this, you can probably see at the top just here there's a little thing, you can twist this and pop this lens on instead. Also inside the box is the mount, so this is the standard mount that you probably see with the U6 Lite something similar like that, just pop that in, you've got four screws. You have the mount for the suspended ceiling, so you can pop that on in between and screw that in. And finally we have the screws, so everything you probably need. So inside here you've got wall plugs to go into the wall or ceiling. Uh, you've got the long screws for the suspended ceiling. And there we go, that's everything that comes inside the box. The other thing I wanted to mention is actually the build quality of this. Um, it is made of a full metal casing. It's got some rubber pads at the bottom and obviously this is plastic on top, but it's quite weighty. So wherever you mount this up, you want to be sure that it's fairly sturdy wherever it is. What I'm actually going to do now is get this mounted up here. Um, excuse the mess inside the room. Obviously you can imagine there's loads of boxes around and stuff. So I'm going to get this mounted up, powered up, and we'll have a look at how to get it adopted. So I've gone ahead and plugged the device in. We are in Unified Protect and you can see the AI360 just here. And then we're gonna go ahead and click Adopt. Not sure if you heard that, but that's the device getting connected. And you can see the image is there straight away. So the adoption process is actually quite quick. So here we have the camera, it's all adopted now. You can see the image is in a fisheye mode. Go down here we've got the information of the camera we've got some recording settings so you've got always no schedule recording quality so we're at the max frame rate and we're at the max quality so motion detection settings motion zones and privacy zones so this nothing of this is new that you would generally not see in any of the protect cameras we then have a look at the settings you've got the ai 360 name microphone sensitivity status sound status light overlay information so name time logo bit rate Again, all fairly standard as to what you would see in any of the other Ubiquiti cameras. Um, restart, advanced and unmanaged. So the main things I want to look at is obviously the image and the, contro the controlling of the PTZ and how that works. 
So we're gonna click on the camera, we'll go to the live view for now. You can see on the live view that it's auto 720, so we'll push it to 1080 just so we get the maximum image. And you've got the option for warp or de-warp video. So it's currently, warp, uh, it's currently warped at the moment, so you wanna de-warp it. So you press that and then you can see that automatically now it's zoomed in. So you can probably see my hand coming up just here. Yep, there you go. So there's a, a second or two delay. But you can see that and then you can see me in the mirror also there as well. So this is how the PTZ works. So this is directly down. And then you keep moving across and up. You can use multiple keys at the same time to go in a diagonal angle. And yeah, that's, uh, that seems to be fairly responsive. And then you can sort of zoom in. So if I want to go here and I want to zoom in a little bit to say me, I can zoom in like that as well. So that's, that's cool. Just before I close this, you can take the snapshots, you can make it full screen. And if we go to the settings, you can play around with the camera image as well. So HDR, uh, infrared orientation. So if I go infrared, you can set that to auto or always enabled if it's always in a dark room, however you want to get it set up anyway. So then we click done and then we close this. So let's go ahead and look at the playback. Um, the one thing I wanted to look at is how this was when you when you play it back so I, that we can warp it and you can see the full 360. So as I'm scanning through, so I can go ahead and de-warp the image again. And at any point, if I want to go back to here, for example, where I can see something happening, I can zoom around at any point and move around the camera. So this is actually really good in terms of when you want to play back, you can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to um, have it in a specific angle to capture everything. So this all seems to be digitally done. There you go, you can just see my hand going up there. And if you want to look at the detections themselves, you can go back and say, right, let's have a look at this detection. Let's click on this one, for example. And there you go, you can just see me walking away just there, and you can see me going back to the table. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take this outside now and get it mounted up out there, and let's see how it works outside in daytime. This is a test of me talking into the microphone of the 360 camera. Not quite sure how much you're actually gonna be able to hear of this, but hopefully you can get an idea of how it sounds. So what I'm going to do here for the outdoor test is I'm going to take a quick walk around the garden. Probably the furthest point from the camera is about 25-ish metres away. Uh, what I'm going to do is walk around the park all around the outside so you can see how much you can see during the daytime and I'll do the same at night as well. Point of reference, the camera is mounted just up here. Um, it is about approximately 8 feet in terms of uh, height, around 2.4 metres high. So I'm just going to take a quick walk around the garden and you can see what that looks like. Well, I hope that gives you some idea of what it looks like of me walking around, uh, just to give you some idea. So the next clip you're going to see is me doing the same thing at night. When recording in the evening, I'm not quite sure what happened to the playback of the 360 camera, but it seems to have got lost in its PTZ functions. So not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe there's a software bug or just something isn't right, but it was working perfectly fine during the day but when I started in the evening, it just wouldn't play ball. But you can see from the video there anyway. This is me testing the audio of the 360 camera using the Protect app. So the sound gives off around 80 decibels inside the room, which is quite loud even if it was in a shop floor area 
or somewhere in some sort of room. I don't think it'll be big enough for an airport or a train station because they're all quite loud places, but I think inside of a, a room or a store, I think it's sufficient enough. Don't forget to let me know your thoughts down in the description below. Overall, the camera, I think it's really good. It has a very good 360 image and it doesn't perform too badly outside either. I like the functionality that you can zoom in after the recording has already been done, so you don't need to worry about leaving it in any set positions or anything like that. The links to the products are in the description below. Again, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and there are links down in the description below on how to support the channel further. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.